just like Cousin Okra used to make. Oh, he said it! Mag, when are you gonna talk about the Scorpio? We got this fight Scorpio. It's gonna be changed in the universe. It's gonna be the Scorpio. It's amazing. That's Teraflops. Yeah, swear to God. From time to time, I feel a little bit of self-loathing creeping over me, and a little masochistic tendency forces me to poke my head into the uh, circles, we'll call them, of the corporate slaves and the console fanboys. Imagine you're sitting in your apartment enjoying yourself, but every once in a while you hear a bump and a muffled autistic screech coming from the next door down. And when you poke your head through the window to see what's happening, you see they've fashioned an altar around the communal General Electric toaster with the hope that one day it will transmogrify itself into a Porsche Panamera. And if only they raise their hands high enough, if they send tweets of approval to Jeff Immelt, it will happen sooner than even they wanted. And that Porsche Panamera will become, magically, a, I don't know, Lamborghini Murcielago. Hard to believe that ever since the announcement of the Scorpio, all of the normal and all of the sane people, such as myself, well, I'm not normal, I'm, I'm above average. We have been having to listen to this. We've been having to deal with this. We've been having to have them sit in their corners, running around, flailing their arms, promising us, oh, you don't know what's coming next. Oh, tomorrow things will be different. You better watch yourself, because when the Scorpio comes out, everything will change. Aren't you listening, Rags? When the Scorpio comes out, everything is going to change in this industry. It's going to be a PC killer. All the Sony ponies will buy them too. I'll buy three just to show my devotion to the albino rhino himself. I'll make seven podcasts a week and upload every single rumor to YouTube that I personally like, because if I like it, it has to be true. No, of course our cult isn't built around wishful thinking. Why would you even suggest that? Microsoft wouldn't lie to us, Rags. They, that's never happened before. Why would you even suggest that? And I'm not being hyperbolic. Some people are going a little crazy about the Scorpio. Every whisper, every little tiny rumor that gets circulated and all of a sudden it's a game changer. I think that sometimes it's a little counterproductive to be overly hyperbolic about every single tidbit of news that you hear. I myself have been treating the Scorpio with immense skepticism, as every person should. Every person. It is hard to believe that in 2017, still, to this day, we have companies putting out these rumors and speculations and news speak trying to get you to buy this, buy that. Why be realistically and healthily skeptical when you can have wishful thinking? In June of this year, though, we'll hopefully be seeing more information regarding the Scorpio. And as of this video's creation, so don't come back in two months and tell me, yeah, you were wrong, you're a retard. As of this video's creation, there is still a great deal we don't know about this console. Alright? And let's not try to fill in the blanks with what we hope will happen. Let's try to just stop and tell ourselves, maybe it's okay. Maybe it's okay to say, I don't know. Let's wait and see. It's strange how this phrase doesn't really exist in a lot of these gaming communities. Namely, the, the console peasant ones. The corporate slave channels, the ones like Crap Gamer, JTech, fill in the blank, you know the rest. Or maybe you don't, they're all small, for a reason. But maybe, maybe if we stopped and said, you know what, I really want the Scorpio to do great, right? Because I do, I want the Scorpio to be as good as it possibly can, but me saying that it's going to be the best thing ever in the universe, that's not going to make it better. In fact, it might be counterproductive to behave like that. I'm not going to sit here on my haunches and screech and yell that the Scorpio is going to be a beast and it's going to change everything. I, it's fucking, I, it's out the rock, speak to me. A little skepticism goes a long way, and I've been seeing an excessive lack of skepticism these days. Microsoft comes out and says, we've only got six teraflops, right? But, but, it'll run all these games at 4K 60 FPS native. Uh-huh. I'm sure some of them will. I'm sure there will be a number of titles that really will live up to this, this standard they, that they've set for themselves. Sadly, I think a lot of people might be reading too far into this and they're not applying, like I said, a decent, healthy dose of skepticism towards anything that Microsoft puts out. But you know in these communities, if you were to say something, oh, I don't know, what's, what's an insane thing for a console peasant to say? Um, maybe I don't fully trust Microsoft here, and I should wait and see for myself whether or not the specs can back up this claim, or wait until I see gameplay footage? No, 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 no. You will not hear such blasphemous words uttered from the mouth of a console peasant. 
For Microsoft is God and Phil Spencer is his prophet. To doubt the prophet is to doubt God and to doubt God is blasphemy. And in this community, such things are unforgivable. Let's step back a moment. As a PC gamer myself, I have practically zero reason to buy an Xbox, much less an Xbox Scorpio. If I already have a PC, why would I spend the hundreds of dollars to get a Scorpio when I can just upgrade my PC far past the six teraflops that the... And I hate saying that six teraflops. It's something that so many people don't understand, but for the, for the sake of... Yeah, we'll, we'll get it. Okay, that clutch disarm though. Remember, the Scorpio won't be out until the end of the year. And by the time that rolls around, we've already seen 1080s go for under $500. We've seen cards that are similar in power to the Scorpio go for less than that. There's just no reason for a PC gamer to buy a Scorpio. This is not something that I think is marketed towards PC gamers at all. I think this is primarily marketed towards people who already have an Xbox and just want a better Xbox. What I see in the Scorpio, especially in the game library, which I think Sony does have a leg up on Microsoft in, when I see this, nothing about it screams, this is a console and this is a library that it's worth me swapping over to. If anything, it'll just be something else on the side. But again, if you have a PC, instead of buying a Scorpio, just get a 1080. Just because I have no interest in buying one and I have no point in it, doesn't mean the Scorpio itself doesn't interest me, especially with how games perform on it, and especially with what developers will do with this power that they have now. Granted, saying that the Xbox Scorpio is the toughest console ever is kind of like saying I am the toughest kid in the third grade. That's great and all, but it's not exactly a huge accomplishment. If anything else, I'm totally for the idea that the Scorpio is a thing at all. I don't want the worst thing for the console gamer. I don't want their experience to be bad. I don't want anything that they do to be unenjoyable. I mean, I was a console gamer once. I have absolutely zero reason or intention to go back, but that doesn't mean that I want the worst for them. If someone wants to play on a console, that's up to them. There are legitimate reasons to want them, even though I think they're pretty few and far between. Somebody is a fellow gamer before they're a console gamer. They're a fellow gamer before they're a PC gamer, such and such and yada yada. I try not to get into these, these awful counterproductive tribalistic attitudes that these peasants get into. Well, you're not as good of you're not a good of a gamer as me because you don't play on the system that I bought and you know, that sort of thing. We've seen it a thousand times. Or even worse, you can't associate yourself with me and we're going to actively mock you because you decided to buy a different console and now you're playing on a different console more than the one that you used to have that I preferred personally. People get attached to these pieces of plastic on an emotional level. It's not healthy for anybody. It just plays your games. It's not a religious icon, and don't form cults up oh, too late. In any event, the better the Scorpio does, I see only advantages for me. I play on PC exclusively. I have nothing to lose from the consoles being stronger, but I have things to gain. I have, hopefully, better looking performance in terms of how games are optimized with things like DirectX 12 and all that stuff. I won't bore you with all the technical details, but perhaps the graphics will look better. It will run better. Maybe the features will be better improved because the consoles can handle it and games don't have to be dumbed down so much or because the lowest common denominator isn't, well, it's still low, but, you know, there are more steps up. The Scorpio's power, well, that might give a lot of devs reason to put a lot of effort and put a lot of work into making them as impressive as possible. Before the Scorpio came out, the devs didn't have as much of a reason to really put their heart and soul into making an ultra-powerful and ultra-good-looking game. Granted, graphics that are fancy can sadly sell a lot of copies these days, but as I said, all of a sudden, when you've got a console that has as much power as the Scorpio does, I think it will encourage more developers to take advantage of that better hardware, and as a result, the better hardware found on PCs will benefit from it as well. I don't want the Scorpio to fail. I want it to be really good. And I think that consoles which we see in the PlayStation 4 and which we see in the Scorpio are developing a, a release strategy that isn't so much a... It isn't so much an option as much as it is a necessity now. Maybe not entirely a necessity, but I think there are a lot of advantages for consoles to release these middle-tier, middle-generation releases. So, you have the PS4 Pro, you have the Scorpio, you have the OG versions of them. They are upgrades to what you already have, pretty much. They allow you to do everything you used to do, 
just better. This mirrors in a way the upgradability of PCs, and as game development gets faster and better and we see more and more and more improvements more and more quickly, I think that this period that we saw, for instance, last generation of going 9, 10 years between generational releases is, that's just not going to fly. To give you a scale on how long ago this was, Call of Duty 2 was a launch title for the Xbox 360. Call of Duty 2. T. Believe it or not, despite what my channel was focused around and how I have a lot of content relating to PCs and consoles, I'm not a huge tech guy. I'm one of those, I kind of understand the basics, show me and I'll see for myself. If the Scorpio fails miserably, if no one buys it, if the games aren't that impressive, if they don't run as good as people think they are, if it's just disappointing all around, I don't really lose anything. But the people who've been hyping it and praising it, they have a lot to lose from that. If the Scorpio does really, really well, then, well, better off for them, better off for me, better off for everybody. The more competition that can be placed at Sony, who has a runaway in terms of the console sales numbers right now, well, that's better for everyone, even the PlayStation players. The idea is to have a good, healthy, close, neck-and-neck -neck competition between two companies, so that every time I see a Sony player, a Sony fanboy, a PlayStation guy, happy and thrilled that they're crushing Xbox, or how they want Xbox to go away, or how Microsoft needs to get its pony out of this race, I, I, I say, why? Why would you want... No, no, you don't. You don't want that. You want someone out there to keep check on Sony, or else they'll do the things to you, well, that they've already been doing, just worse. From a PC gamer's perspective, we have nothing to lose, really, but we have, uh, arguably, quite a bit to gain. But we don't feel the necessity of trying to be overly optimistic about letting our wishful thinking get in the way of what reality probably will be. You lose nothing if you are very skeptical about the Scorpio and it turns out to be what you thought it was. How quickly do writers or people who are critical are cast aside when you bring up things like, oh, God forbid that maybe a 6 teraflop console, even with its optimizations, whatever that word means these days, might not be able to perform in the ways that you might be told it will. I heard from one of these little fanboy channels that Battlefront 2, EA's Star Wars Battlefront 2, would be running at 4K 60fps on a Scorpio. That, that is, that is an, certainly an optimistic thing to hope for. More power to you if it actually happens. But maybe, maybe... When you hear something like that, you should be saying, yeah, I don't know, Battlefront 1 was a really, really good looking game, and maybe the power of the Scorpio, while a huge improvement over the Xbox One, just isn't quite enough to really give us that kind of a boost. Maybe 4K 60 FPS for a game like that, I don't know. What's wrong with saying, I'll believe it when I see it? Really, what is wrong with saying that? I'll believe it when I see it. There are a few things, though, that I worry about, or at least there are a few things that I have questions about. I have heard rumors circulating from these fanboy communities, and I don't know if they're true or not. I just like to think about them. I don't like to believe them. That would be silly. But I've heard the rumor that Xbox, Microsoft, already has the next Xbox planned out. Maybe they do, but when I am a consumer who is a potential Scorpio buyer, right? It does not give me a lot of faith that I'm going to be dropping hundreds and hundreds of dollars on a new version of a console that I probably already have to hear that they already have the successor to that system in the works. If I buy a Scorpio, how long will it last? What will its lifespan be? Is this perhaps, is the Scorpio perhaps going to be a console where we see the advent of a more multi-generational game release becoming more and more common. Let's say that the Xbox whatever's next comes out in a couple years after the Scorpio releases. Well, with the Scorpio being a strong console, perhaps that means that games will be supported on the old consoles more. But that means there's now less incentive for people to stick to new consoles if they already have the old ones, and if people don't buy the new ones, developers don't have as much of a reason to make better game versions of the games that they're making that are multi-generational or multi-platform to conform to the advantages of the new one if people have the old one, and it's, you know, all of a sudden you understand 
PC gamer's perspective on things. I also worry about what sacrifices are going to be made if they want to hit this 4K, native, and 60 FPS mark that they've set for themselves on a lot of these titles. Will the texture suffer as a result? Draw distance, anti-aliasing, ambient occlusion, stuff like that. What kind of restrictions are going to have to be placed on these games in order to hit the mark that they've already said they're going to try to hit? Plus, all that power doesn't mean anything if developers don't really take a full grasp of it. Yeah, you could brute force your way through a lot of things. That happens on PCs all the time. Even though developers might not make a lot of care or put a lot of huge effort into making a PC version of it, just the sheer fact you have stronger hardware means it will run better and you have the advantage of the controls and the community support that comes along with it. They've stated, Microsoft that is, that it's really up to the developers to have uh, the final say in what a lot of these games will run at, what their resolutions will be, and so then we have to defer to them. Are we going to get our full money's worth out of these systems if the developers don't really go for it? If they don't, then really what did you buy? And when it comes to buying, I don't think we know a final price for it right now. We have heard from Phil Spencer that it's going to be a premium product. We've also heard that it's going to still be at a console price point, but it's going to be higher than what we've got now. Of course, it's new and it's got more power than those do. And I hope it's as low as possible because the more people can get into it, the more incentive developers have and games have to take advantage of the better hardware and then PC can only gain from that. More powerful consoles is a good thing for people who play on just the PC like I do. Right now, as it's practically a meme at this point, the problem with the Xbox platform is the games. We see cancellations, we see a lack in variety of the genres, we see a lack of exclusives because they're pretty much all on PC now in one form or another. If strictly exclusive games is what you're looking for, the Xbox is probably the worst option for that. The best being the PC and then Sony being after that. What good is all the power in the world if you don't have a really good library to complement it? I think it is very telling that among the Xbox fanboy community, when we hear just the idea that there's a rumor of a new game coming out and they treat it with such fanfare and excitement, I, mean, I, you know, I think it says something. I have more games than I know what to do with. I'm still trying to beat games I bought ages ago. Running out of games to play is definitely not a PC gamer's problem. But if you're not really into shooters, the Xbox isn't really the best way to go. There are some action games, racing games, but especially for a lot of the niche titles that you see on PC that are very unique, that's not really something you see in the consoles as much, especially with the Xbox. And I have a feeling that will be a factor as well in terms of the Scorpio. You are going to hear this phrase a lot from now until the Scorpio comes out, unless something really exciting changes or if Microsoft doesn't make some big announcements on games or sequels or stuff we really want to see. You will see people say, what good is all that power if you don't have the games to go along with it? And there's a great deal of merit in that. There is every kind of genre of every kind of quality, both great and bad, both popular and niche, that we can see on the PC. It's one of the reasons I love it. We've got everything. But if you really, really want good variety, and you also want a Scorpio, then maybe you're going to have to do a little soul searching to which one is more important. Factor into that the reason that there's not much reason to get it at all if you have a PC, and if you have a Sony PlayStation, and maybe there's no reason to get a Scorpio, I, I don't know. I just don't see the Scorpio being one of those kinds of things that appeals to a lot of different kinds of people. One thing, though, that does kind of worry me about the Scorpio is how Microsoft will use it to push the UWP, the abysmal system that is on PC. While you can play with it, and while if you really want a game, you could go through buying games on that store, it's not exactly a really good one. It's far outdone by better services like Steam or Origin. I worry that the Scorpio will give Microsoft a huge reason to push this platform so that they could really, really press forward with the UWP idea. I would much rather them either scrap it entirely or get their act together and give consumers the good things about it. UWP has a lot of bad stuff to it. Gamers don't like it. It's a hoop. It's a hassle. There's restrictions that are completely arbitrary. 
competing services can't really go against the grain of the UWP on the Xbox because it has a much more closed nature. On PC, they can. So I'm interested to see how the UWP fares as the Scorpio is released and based on its adoption numbers. As far as I know, the Scorpio also will not have any games that are exclusive to it. So by buying the Scorpio, really you're just buying an upgrade in terms of hardware and power. You're not you're not getting exclusive experiences. Now they'll try to bill things as this and that, and it's a whole nother world. And granted, better performance can give you a lot more enjoyment out of the games that you have, but you're still gonna be playing the same games as other people. People will have to decide for themselves as individuals whether or not the price point of the Scorpio is really worth the upgrade, because that's what it is. It's an upgrade. People can talk about new technologies and this and that and the other thing, but at the end of the day, that's just what the Scorpio is. The Scorpio is just a Xbox One that's more powerful. It's not a new generation. It doesn't run games that the other one will not. It's just a stronger Xbox One. I also think there's a lot of people who are disillusioned under the idea that all of a sudden, your games that you played on the Xbox One at 30 FPS... Oh, I shudder at the thought of playing a game at 30 FPS now. Ugh. But I think you're going to be... A little disappointed if you expect all those games to all of a sudden get a doubling in their frame rate on the Xbox Scorpio. But will Xbox One's games, for the most part, get an advantage on the Scorpio? Yeah, absolutely they will. It'll be easier for them to hit the resolution targets. It'll be better for them to hit their FPS caps without dropping all the time. It'll overall be good. It's a more powerful Xbox One, after all. I've also heard loading times will be uh, decreased, which is a huge problem that I had with the consoles I played on, and something that I hear from a lot of people really plagues the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4. Loading times suck. And the more I read about the Scorpio, the more I really wonder who is going to buy the Xbox Scorpio. I think that primarily the people who will buy it are Xbox One gamers who just want a better system if you only play on the xbox and you're not used to upgrading all the time or spending money on all those games because <laughs> xbox one has no games be then maybe it would be good for you to buy a scorpio so you can play the things you already play just better if you're a one console at a time kind of guy i don't see the appeal in the scorpio that would make a nintendo gamer swap over or that would make a playstation gamer switch over certainly nothing that would have a pc gamer switch over Let's look at it this way. You've had a number of years for your PlayStation to build up a friends list and a library of games. To abandon all of that now, I don't know if there's a lot of wisdom in that. Of course, it'll vary from person to person. Some people might actually think it's worth it. And if it is to you, then more power to you. Go ahead. I think a lot of people, though, don't want to give that up. One of the hardest things it took for me to move from the Xbox to the PC years ago was having to just sever my relationship with all of the gamers that I played with. I just couldn't play console games anymore. It was really, really tough for me to go back. And considering that the PC has an impressive library, the Sony PlayStation has a good library, I don't know if a lot of people are going to give that up just to have a smaller library of games with arguably less interesting exclusives for their platform or their system just that run better. I have no idea if it will sell very well or if it will sell very poorly. I assume that most of the people who buy the Xbox Scorpio who don't already have everything invested in the Xbox as a platform will be console gamers who would like to stay console gamers who don't want to get into PC gaming but at the same time are starting to get tired of the, the, the negative aspects of console gaming, the poor performance especially. That'll be the biggest remedy that Xbox Scorpio tries to get rid of, is the terrible performance that consoles have these days. I think most of the people who buy Scorpio on Sony's side, right, if you have, if you're just, and I hate to lump in Sony guys and just people who happen to play on PlayStation, but you know what I mean here. But if someone's only playing on PlayStation, they're curious about some of the Xbox One titles, then maybe this will be what finally gets them over the edge. Maybe they'll say, not only do I now have access to all of the Xbox and Microsoft games that I've always wanted to try, but they're going to run pretty darn well, relatively. It does annoy me when people say that it's going to make the PC market smaller. I don't think people will go from PC to the Scorpio, especially because you have the entry fee of the price when they can just stick something into their PC and make it run better than the Scorpio will for less money. 
especially because if we're talking about the cost aspect of it, gamers have had a lot of time to prepare. If somebody is really interested in the Scorpio right now, they've had months and months and months to save up, to get ready. And if they do all that saving up and Xbox Scorpio does not deliver the titles that they want or the performance that they want, watch a lot of people use that money instead on a gaming PC. And as gaming on PC tends to do, once you jump in, it's really hard to lose it and go back. Especially because they can get all those games that the Xbox Scorpio would have had on their PCs. Ideally, a lot of the really good games that people enjoy, or the games that people play a lot on the Xbox One, will have good upgrades to the Scorpio. And hopefully that also means that it'll be able to keep the lifespan of these games longer because there are already familiar titles that people have, and it will expand their libraries when they do get the Scorpio, if they do get the Scorpio. For instance, someone who really, really likes Forza might look at the Forza information coming from the Scorpio and say, you know, that makes me want to buy the system more because I'm a big racing guy. And racing games, and it's not, an, it's not, it's not a coincidence that it was Forza as the game that they really kind of started talking about openly as much as they have with the Scorpio, right? Racing games, you don't have to get them because everything's running by past you really quickly. You don't have as much time to savor the details of a lot of the environments. It's easy for you to get away with making these games at uh, good performances. So if people see that and they're Forza fans, that's just a reason for them to go for it. That's something that can tantalize them. I think it's the idea that you can have the experience you've already had, but now it'll just be better. Better looking and better running. I'm curious though if this will be enough to really get people to adopt the Scorpio in numbers that they would like. The more people that get it, that's just a positive for me. If it's really successful, it will show developers that there is a desire to have these higher-end versions of games running out, and the PC is where the highest-end versions of games will always be, so that'll give them more of an incentive to work harder on these versions. But again, since the Scorpio will not have an exclusive game list to it, there will always have to be that Xbox One version as well. The bottom level has not moved. There's just been an extra middle tier between gaming PCs, or at least high-end gaming PCs, and the bottom of the console side. And based on everything I know about the Scorpio thus far, I would not recommend it over a gaming PC for someone who is so inclined. I would much rather tell somebody to upgrade a PC or to put one together for a ballpark price, or to exceed that, than I would to say just buy an Xbox Scorpio. It still is a console, and it has a lot of the inherent flaws that a console has, a lot of the restrictions. There's still so much time, there's still so much more we have to know, there's more we have to see. I would never go and tell somebody, oh, you should buy the Scorpio. I know there was a crap gamer video where he said, yeah, you should totally buy the Scorpio. Fuck off. We don't know anything about it. At least not enough to, I think, make a really informed purchase. We're this far out. I think telling people that is a little... I think it's, a, it's being a little misleading. And you might have already seen this if you watch certain people on YouTube or follow certain Twitter accounts, but you will see as the days roll by leading up to the release of the Scorpio and after it, a total 180, a complete shift in the, well, in the boasts coming from the Xbox console fanboy side, the Xbox. You'll have them say, oh, but look at the power. Why would you ever buy a PlayStation 4 now that you have the power of Scorpio? Oh, but resolution doesn't matter, they used to say when the PlayStation boasted higher resolutions, which it has been pretty much across the board up to this point. But now that the Xbox Scorpio is going to try to have native 4K games running on it, now all of a sudden, it's all about resolution. Resolution is amazing. Resolution is all that matters. You see this all the time with these communities and with these YouTube uh, personalities, if you can even call them personalities. It's only important if our site has the advantage in it. Frame rate only matters when ours is better. Resolution only matters when ours is better. Even game libraries at your disposal only matter when ours is better. So those are my thoughts regarding the place that the Scorpio has right now in the gaming landscape. I think that it could be a very interesting addition to the console lineup that we have. It could herald in this idea of these multi-generational games being a bigger factor, upgradable hardware, finally at least some decent performance in consoles. So I'm curious, 
to see what will happen and how its reception will be. Because there's nothing wrong in saying, you know what, maybe I should wait and see.